Good morning, you guys. We are out on a flight today. We've just been practicing some circuits, which you guys saw uh, yesterday, so I'm not going to show you guys that again today. Uh, but he's just been working on really nailing those circuits and hitting a very specific spot. We kind of targeted an exact spot, so that was pretty cool. And uh, so now we're going to transition on to an introduction to auto rotation. So we're going to do the introduction to the entry of the auto and then um, also doing range variation. So seeing all the different types of things you can actually do with a helicopter um, on the way down if the engine was quit. So the number one rule that we have is uh, you can do anything you want with a helicopter, but when you get to about 300 feet off the ground, you have to make sure that you have your vitals back. So your speed is back to 50 knots, your rotor RPM is back to uh, whatever you want it. Uh, typically it's in the middle of the green, sometimes just uh, slightly below middle of the green. So. Um, so that's what we're going to be practicing right now. Uh, we have an acronym called HAZEL, H-A-S-E-L. Um, HAZEL stands for Height, Area, Security, Engine, Lookout. Okay. So height, we're at 1,000 feet. We can start bringing it around now here. Um, the area that we're going to is that sandbar that we've been doing our circuits to, and it looks clear, right? Yep, clear. Okay. Security, everything is secure in the cabin. There's nothing rolling around that we don't want. Nothing can get jammed under the collective. Um, so that's good. The engine's in the green. And then we're just looking out for traffic, so we're making sure that we're all clear all around for traffic. So that's good. Um, we're going to try and target that same spot on this one. We're going to do the entry. I'm going to kind of go through the entry with you. And we're going to enter when we're too close to the spot. Okay. Meaning that we're going to have to slow down the aircraft and maybe even do what's called S-turning. So a little bit of turning left and right to try and lose altitude without traveling too much distance forward. Okay? Okay. That's the goal on this one. Okay, so we can see our target. Now would be a good time to enter, but we want to enter a little bit late. Okay. And on the entry, you're going to do it with me. It's okay. going to be three, two, one. Collective down, a little bit of left pedal, throttle off. So you see a nice split in the needles. Rotor's nice and high. Engine's not doing anything. Now I'm slowing down. You can see I'm already going to 30 knots because I can tell we're going to overshoot our spot. And then I'm going to turn away a little bit. And I'm going to decide how much do I need to turn. I'm going to raise a little collective. We're getting a little high on the rotor. How much do I need to turn and how much do I want to slow down so that I'm going to make my spot? Now, I think we're getting pretty good. We need to remember we need to get back to 50 knots, right? Okay. So we're going back for 50 knots. RPMs are looking good. Speed's looking good. Everything's looking nice. And at the bottom, we're going to do this nice flare. We're going to roll on that throttle. And we're going to come out into a nice hover. And theoretically, we should be right at our spot. How'd we do? Pretty good. Not bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> so just so you guys can see, uh, we were targeting this little spot right here. And looks like we made it. That's good. So you can see you can do range variation up top, and you can do whatever you need to, but the vital thing is that you get that speed back. I'm going to give you control now. Yeah, I have control. Excellent. So you get that speed back in that last 300 feet, let your descent rate stabilize, let your speed stabilize, that's going to make your flare effective at the bottom. Okay. Okay, let's do it again. Um, so we're up at 1,200 feet now. Uh, quick hazel check. So height is good. Area, let's have a look. We can turn it around now. Uh, looking clear. We're still secure in the cabin. Engine's in the green. And we are looking out for traffic. I don't see any traffic. We're nice and high on this one. So this one, we're going to enter when we're quite short. So we're quite far away from our spot. We may or may not be able to make it. So we can turn in towards our spot here. When you're trying to glide stretch, you can only do so much. When you're trying to shorten your glide, you can actually do surprisingly a lot. And we're going to see a couple more examples of that, okay? Um, so let's get our speed back to normal cruise here. And yeah, power up to about 80, forward cyclic. We're going to be a bit short right now. So let's enter three, two, one, in we go. Collective down, throttle off, a little bit of left pedal, nose up. Good. We want to get that nose. Yeah, there we go. All right, so if we have a look right now, are we going to make our spot or are we going to be short? Short. But short. So let's raise the collective a little bit. We're allowed to let our RPMs get to the lower yellow there. Okay. About, about there is where we want. And we want to accelerate. We want to get it to about 80 knots if we can. There's about 75. Okay, that's the most we can do for glide stretching. Now we're going to start slowing it down, lowering a little bit of collective. We want 50 knots, remember? And there we go. Now here comes a nice flare. Throttle comes on. And then we level it out into a nice hover. Now check it out. I'm going to give you control there. 
Okay, I control. Not bad, right? Huh. We're still within like 20, 30 feet of our spot, even though when we entered, we were going to be like 500 feet short of our spot, right? right? So you can't do everything. You can't just always get to your spot, but sometimes it can be just enough to get you over that set of trees or, you know, over that patch of water or something like that, right? Oh. A little bit higher, yeah. There you go. Um, so stretching your glide, you go RPMs low, kind of in the lower part of the green or yellow, depending on the helicopter and then speed up. So we want to, you know, in, in this one, we normally do 50, so we want to do more like 70, 75, somewhere in there. Gotcha. All right, let's go again. So this one, we can start turning now. We can do a hazel check. Turn it around, bring it in. Okay. Height's good, area is clear. So we're secure in the cabin. Engine's in the green, we're looking out for traffic. And we're gonna enter this one. Let's keep climbing a little bit. Okay. We're gonna go to 1200 or so. I want you to have lots of time to look at it. Let's uh, turn in. This one we're going to enter pretty much when we're right over top of our spot. As okay. Close, close to being right over top of it as possible. All right. And there's two ways to deal with this. So one is to just slow the aircraft right down, go to zero, and actually maybe even back up a little bit and do a little bit of S-turning to get okay. rid of altitude and kind of try and back up a little bit. And then the other way is to do a 360. We're going to do both. This one we're going to slow down and just kind of S-turn at zero for a little bit. If there's a little bit of wind, it'll actually push you backwards, which is nice. So that's a good height there. We can level off. All right. This is going to be a pretty odd feeling one, but uh, that's all right. So you can see our spots right down there. We're going to obviously way overshoot it. Let's enter in three, two, one. Collective down, cyclic back, left pedal, and we'll go throttle off. Okay, not too much back. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good there. Okay, so the throttle's off. That's good. We're flying together. And so you can see our airspeed right away is at zero, right? Yeah. Trim out a little bit because we're fighting that trim like crazy. And if I look down between my toes now, we're definitely going to still overshoot it, right? Because you always need some room at the bottom to be able to get your speed back and stuff. Yep. So I'm going to actually drift a little bit this way. Raise a little bit of collective. I'm going to drift a little bit this way. And then now I'm going to start getting speed back. Okay? okay. So here comes our 50 knots. Comes our 50 knots, and we do our flare at the bottom. Throttle comes back on, and level it out into a nice hover. Beautiful. <laughs> and again, we're right over top of our spot. Yep. <laughs> okay, so that one felt probably pretty weird for you, right? Yeah, that was crazy. Pretty weird. So you have control? Okay, I have control. Really, really critical on that one because we have no airspeed. It's a super dangerous place to be if we keep that up all the way to the ground. If we if we keep that up and we smack into the ground, there's, the, the flare will do no good whatsoever, right? right? So it's really important that we don't get too distracted while we're doing that and forget about getting the speed back. Because if you're too late and you only get maybe 20 knots back, man, that flare is going to be really rough and it's going to come in really hard, okay? Right. So we don't get distracted. We do what we need to do. But if at the end of the day, if we can't do enough, we just overshoot and take whatever's in front of us. We just go for it, right? So, okay, let's go try it again. I'm going to go to uh, 1500 maybe for this one. Okay. And so this one is going to be a 360 with the 360 cam. <laughs> Got it. And let's head towards our spot now. So we're going to enter in the same position as last time, so in a spot where it's basically directly below us. And we need to do something to get down. So it's actually easier than what we did last time to just do a 360 turn. A couple things to know about the 360, though. We don't want to dive the nose like crazy. It, lots of speed makes that turn a little bit harder to, to happen. So we actually want to keep it relatively slow. And then I kind of almost turn it into two 180s. I, I do a 180, let it drift back a little bit, and then do another 180. Okay. Um, so height, area, security, engine, lookout. Our hazel check is done. And we're gonna wait just a little bit longer here. Wait until we're pretty much right over top of our spot. And entering in three, two, one. So collective down, cyclic back, throttle off. There you go. So right about there is where we want the nose, that's good. Okay, let's go ahead and start this turn. And again, if we have this kind of speed, this is really nice, we've got about 50 knots close to it. Raising a little collective. You see a rotor trying to overspeed there? Yep, yep. Just raising a little collective to slow that down a little bit, trying to keep it in the green. So now we're just assessing. We're down to 180 here, and we're assessing, do we want to whip it around real fast, or do we want to 
let it go this way a little bit. And I'm going to just have a glance because I can't see very well. Um, it's actually pretty good. We're ready to come around, I think. And now here I can assess again. So I'm doing 40 knots. I'm going to turn away a little bit. Gain a little bit of airspeed there. I went back to 50. And I'm going to turn in now. A little bit more S turning. This is nice. This is, this is looking really good. There we go. And 50 knots, there's my flare. Throttle back on. Really important to get that throttle on. Leveling out into a nice hover. And there we go. Wow, that back was to, awesome. Back to our spot again. <laughs> so you can take control. Okay, I have control. All right. Um, so those are all the main types of autos you can do. Obviously you can do a slightly vari slight variations of all of those, but that's like all the different possible types. So. That's, uh, I think we're going to work our way back. That was a good start for today. Okay, so that wraps up the auto session. Um, really two important things when we're doing any type of auto. Okay, so through the okay. course, we're going to be doing tons of autos, lots of different kinds. And so the number one first thing that's important is that you need to assess when you enter the auto, am I going to make it to the spot I want to make it to, right? So you need to pick a spot, whatever it happens to be. Like if the engine quit right now, I'm going to go for that little uh, parking lot area there, right? Okay. So I need to assess immediately, as soon as I get going down, am I going to make it to that spot or not? The sooner I can assess that, the better it's going to be for you. Because what happens is if you're at 1,000 feet and it takes you five or 600 feet to assess whether or not you're going to make it, you only have 100 feet left to range variate. And then at 300, you have to stop range variating and just go for your spot, whatever you got, right? right. So if you can spend the first 100 feet maybe 150 feet, assessing that approach angle and going, ooh, I'm too long or I'm too short or whatever. You just draw this line and say, if I keep on this line, where am I gonna go to? And then once you've made that decision as quick as possible, then you can choose to range variate. Now, obviously in the beginning, it's like, ah, how do I range variate, what do I do? So it's good in the classroom now to just review all those different types and you can go back through this video and review the different types and stuff. And then say, okay, I'm too short. What do I need and what do I need to do? I need to stretch the glide. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my rotor RPM down, my speed up, and I'm going to stretch that glide a bit, right? Or I'm too I'm too close. I need to slow down the aircraft. Maybe a little bit of S turning. Or if I'm really close, maybe I need to think about a 360 or go back to zero speed or something, right? And so then you immediately, as quick as possible, you apply the right type of range variation, and then you only do that until you get to about 300 feet off the ground. Get your speed back to 50 in a cabri and back to normal RPMs and get ready for your flare at the bottom. Sounds okay. good? Yeah. Pretty exciting. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, uh, why don't you just auto onto that like button and uh, give it a blade slap while you're there. <laughs> and we're going to talk to you guys again tomorrow. This is fun. I like this. Yeah, it's yeah. good. I like it. All right. See you guys. See ya.